Hey, welcome back, Star Wars fans, and welcome to another episode of Rule the Galaxy. Uh, it's so great to be back with you each week, and uh, a lot has happened, but a little has happened over the last week, so it'll be a fun show where um, we, we just talk about a few different topics and go over some different things, but before I get going and rolling around with our co-hosts here, um, we'll just go the, the usual and the typical. Uh, follow us at Rule the Galaxy SW on Twitter. Email us at Rule the Galaxy SW at gmail.com. You can follow us at Rule the Galaxy on Facebook and on YouTube. And now that we've got uh, Nick's light fixed, it'll be so much better on YouTube. Oh my gosh. So his, so his <laughs> wife won't make fun of him for having a big glare on his face. I um, look like I was coming down from heaven. <laughs> <laughs> literally it was it was bad it was angelic nick and that's not not that you're not a, a youth minister and you are angelic but it did look angelic so um hey nick's voice was going right there our our co-host of clone wars chronicles nick shesky how you doing brother hey i am doing great i'm glad to be on and it was super fun getting to hang out with you and joey this last weekend at our cousin's wedding uh if you didn't notice about joseph he tears up the dance floor, man. It was uh, a, <laughs> it was a good time. So yeah, fun hanging out with you, and any chance we get it to get the guys together. And Tony, I'm forgetting Tony too. So Tony really tears it up on the dance floor. That's who really. <laughs> Tony, Tony is a dancing machine. He really is. Between your wife and Tony, oh my those gosh. two were cutting the rug out there, and we were we were having a great time at the Arts Garden in downtown Indianapolis. It was a lot of fun. I, I posted some pictures on Twitter of of you and I and Tony and and Joey. Somebody said we looked like we were part of either uh, the Mormon choir <laughs> or that we were selling bad timeshares, I think, or something like that, or Ponzi schemes. The way vacuum we cleaners. You know vacuum what it was? Cleaners. We didn't yeah. have, we didn't ha all have matching wingtip shoes. If that mm. had been a thing, people would have very easily known that we were none of those things. We look like a mismatched group of <laughs> outcasts. Yeah, you, you know, you know. I mean, look. If I'm going to go to a black tie event, I'm gonna I'm gonna go all out. So I wore the black and white uh, wingtips, and and I thought they looked pretty good. You know, plus they were, really nice. they were really good sliding on the dance floor. You get some good moves in, you know, and get get the slide going. Weren't yep. sticking to the floor or anything like that. Um, to the man to, to my bottom left on the screen here, uh, the guy who I know who who taught me a lot of dance moves. So many dance moves that at my wedding, he actually split his pants wide open. <laughs> Ryan Massengale, how are you, my friend? I did split my pants wide open. To, <clears throat> I believe I had on the green, uh, the green underwear underneath there. Yeah, it was fantastic. <laughs> you know, my brother Tony at the wedding mass was asking us all our favorite memories from our wedding. And mm -hmm. my wife, Lori, God love her. She said one of my favorite memories was Mass splitting his pants at our at our reception. So if 20, it makes you feel better, Mass. Ago. If it makes you feel better, I ripped my own pants at my own wedding. <laughs> so I had a one of Abby's one of Abby's friends went, we were we were dancing and she said something to the effect of like, is that all you got? And sure enough, I dropped <laughs> I dropped it too low apparently and <laughs> pulled him right down the middle. Had to answer the challenge though, right? Yep. So our, our latest addition, our co-host number three, Brent Dykeman. He had a little technical difficulties, but he's back with us. And uh, I, I want to hear, Brent, did you tear your pants at your wedding reception? Uh, not at mine, but the most recent one that I went to, I did have a little blowout in my pants. I think. <laughs> Wait a minute. Um, <laughs> I need you to define blowout. Okay, okay. So <laughs> totally different. <laughs> so right, right. Nobody blowout. was talking about pooping their pants. <laughs> different, different connotation. I, Nick, sorry, you're in you're in diaper changing That's it. world. That's so it. a blowout is a different meaning. Yeah. Uh, I blew out the seam of the crack of the pants. I did. I did, because um, I'm a six foot four, three hundred pound man that can do the splits, yep. and if you put enough adult beverages into me. I'll, I'll show you the splits. Um, sometimes my pants go with me and sometimes they don't. <laughs> um, one of my favorite stories is um, I'm, I'm, I'm a ham. When you put a camera in front of me, I like to ham things up. So the first year that I taught at the school, so we're at, way back in 2005 at DCHS in Decatur Township, 
they had teachers like act like they were doing the YMCA and dancing out on the football field. And the cheerleader was supposed to teach them how to do the YMCA. So I was one of the ones that they selected. I thought, Hey, I'll do this joke around at the very beginning of this and I'll do the splits and like get a reaction from the student body. Well, the first time that I hit the splits, nothing really happened. So I'm like, all right, I'll dance around get back up. And I hit the splits for the second time. And in front of the entire student body, 1500 kids, I blew out my pants from the crotch <laughs> to the knee <laughs> at the very first pep session that I've ever been to in this school. Mm. So the rest of the time I was holding the pants together because I had split my pants in front of everybody. So there's that. But yeah, I did blow it out at a wedding reception as well. Um, it was, uh, I was riding my, not riding the pony. That's a different one. What's the most recent one? The cowboy. <laughs> what? What's the cowboy song? Um yeah, Old Town Road. Old Town, yeah. That one. I was riding my nice. horse to Old Town Road a little bit too hard. <laughs> so when's the next Legion night? Because I feel like <laughs> picture this didn't happen. So the next Legion night. So for all <laughs> of you people that are so anybody, since I'm in my room, here is my Legion. Oh yeah, you want you want to see me do the splits? But here's I have a Legion <laughs> set up in my room. I I think you can see it. But um, the other thing is I was just in Orlando. Uh, I know I'm talking quite a bit, but I just had to, uh, I flew down to visit my father for Mother's Day and some people are like, that's raw, that's weird. But we lost my mom in January, so I surprised my father. And I found um, a treasure trove of Star Wars figures at the Orlando Disney Store Airport. And I say that because when I walked in there, I take a picture. They have the Black Series Hunter. They have a Black Series Crosshair. They have a Dark Trooper. Wow. So I take pictures of all of these things and send it to my buddies here, the other co-hosts. And they're like, I'll take one. I'll take one. I'll take one. <laughs> so I kind of I kind of had to shuffle them in my bag and uh, kind of feel like a drug dealer or a drug mule there for a little bit to get these <laughs> things back. Um, they had pretty much, I think, everything but Mando in like Cara Dune and the 3.5 Retro whatever whatever was released they had like quill and carga and uh moth gideon i want to say maybe ig 11 2 yeah i think they had that one all of that stuff was at the uh the disney airport so you could catch it on the way out i got gotcha. you that that's a good one and i and i will tell you no, no joke when you were sending those pictures i i was literally telling my wife i was like Brent's almost like a drug dealer right now. I was like, <laughs> he is. I said he's hitting, he's hitting these guys with pictures of things he's he's got in front of him at an airport, and I'm like, he's got to shove them in bags. He's gonna, and, and of course, all I of our guys you. are texting. I'll take that. I'll take that. Oh, that's out. Give me this. I was cracking up watching, and you know, of course, Alfie who can't be here because of a back injury. And I, his first thing, as soon as you show the picture, I'm in. Give me one. Right. Uh, <laughs> It was it was actually where'd you where are you at? Yeah. I said Orlando and he's like, All right, I'll stop by there on my way home from work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I think I think um I think he took care of a, a good handful of the group on that. I mean, that was actually one of my talking points was that Brent was a Star Wars dealer. Um, because it was just so funny yeah. because you text us all was it like Friday morning at like four thirty or five in the morning? Something like that. Oh, you yeah, did preface it by saying, I know oh, I know this I is know yeah i know no, this is early. was that was that like the x-wing one because they were like they were doing work on an x-wing at yes. like the smithsonian so yes. some or or some museum some world war ii museum smithsonian, they had yeah. take yeah I, they took poe dameron's x-wing and somebody it was on some timeline as i was riding the bus in or something like that to the airport um and i yeah it was about four o'clock in the morning and i did say sorry i know this is early but i thought you guys would like it otherwise i wouldn't have been able to get it out so I, I saw that and I was like, something is going on. And then the next thing we get from you a few hours later is who wants this? Who wants Hunter? And I'm like, <laughs> what is he doing? Where is he? I mean, it was just like, where, yeah. you know, why is he shopping at 8 a.m. for Star Wars figures? Yeah, um, I had I had time to kill in the Orlando airport. So, yeah, I flew down my uh, we lost my mom in January. So I can't even remember the day some somewhere in January. And. Uh, my wife, God love her, for Mother's Day, decided to get rid of me. I think that was her present to herself. Well, um, to send me down to say, uh, to surprise my dad. 
So I had a couple of, her, of his friends and she was like, is he going to start crying when he sees you? Cause he does now I'm a little bit more emotional. I was like, no, he's going to look at me and say, what the hell are you doing here? <laughs> and so that was kind of the running joke. And he did both of those things. So I was FaceTiming Sam when he got there and his first reaction when he saw me is what the hell are you doing there? <laughs> and then he started crying when he figured out why, like why I was there and all that stuff. So it was a good time. Well, that's a that's a good son right there. It's a very good son. Um, and that was a good s- s- daughter in law because again, it was her present to get rid of me. Okay, it was her idea. <laughs> I cannot take I cannot take any credit for that. That was all Sam. So, Mass, I think you were also one of the ones that jumped on the hunter, correct? Because you want to add him to your collection. I did. Yeah, I got myself a hunter. <clears throat> I when I watched that first episode. I just got the feeling that this is going to be a character I'm really going to like when it's all said and done. So when uh, when Brent offered it up, I was like, yeah, 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 I'll take one. So no, I guess I guess two things. One, Mass, you talked about changing your draft pick. Was Hunter the one that you would want to change the draft pick to? Yeah, I could uh, I could replace. Uh, I think I had what who'd I have? I had Commander Cody. I think I could yeah, replace man. Commander Cody with uh, with Hunter now. Yeah. So hot take. If we if we're now switching draft picks, I'm switching uh, wedge Antilles with crosshair. There you go. <laughs> the bad batch is gonna. It, it just seems like it's gonna be really good. Yes. And does anybody else feel like Echo is a poor man's tech? Someone, they kind of yes. seem like the same guy. Yeah. It's I just think like, he's Lobot. Ah. Maybe he is. <laughs> I mean, I just think that like the longer the longer it goes along, the more he is going to become Lobot. And then they're going to have Tamora Morrison reprise the role as Lobot in the new special edition, <laughs> where that's all they tweak. <laughs> Everybody's going to go, "What the hell is this?" <laughs> <laughs> so the second the yeah. second part of my question too was with with um kind of with the guys that collect the figures. So the Black Series uh, Bad Batch those are those limited like is the hunter hard to get i is uh is crosshair hard to get or where are they at in those release uh windows or whatever because i went in and i thought it was pretty cool um and they kind of had a cool hat that kind of almost looks like an old oh, like an 80s style like bud light hat but it was bad batch with like the ruffled patch on it um it looked pretty cool and then they also had like i don't know the clone wars um shirt that had all the different legions uh helmets on it they had the bad batch with all their individual kind of like that clone wars uh t-shirt so i i just wasn't aware of how rare it was i i don't know the the scarcity of it except i will say it's going to be hard for anyone to just go to a store a walmart a target or any place like that and find one i think it's going to be mostly online purchases or aftermarket purchases online um you know entertainment earth hasbro pulse those kind of things um i don't think they're an exclusive at walmart or target only but but yeah i mean in today's toy buying world online's the way to go and if you find them like you did out as people call it now out in the wild you, you have to pick things up because you never know if you're going to see it again except for online so I, I don't know the numbers, though. I don't know how exclusive they are, except all of them. You, you guys watch on Twitter. How many people do you see post every day? Here's my Walmart. Here's my Target. And it's got nothing on the pegs. So I, I have a feeling if you wouldn't have found those, it would have been tough to just get them. So Yeah, it looks like COVID toilet paper shelves. <laughs> yeah. Just nothing yeah. on it. Just mm-hmm. all cleared out. Yeah, so like when Nick found Thrawn, for me, yeah. on, on the shelf, I... I was like, you found a Thrawn? Yeah, you better buy that. And I was like, you need to get that to me. Um, but but going back, wrapping this around to it, uh, Mass, now, when we went to the Great Ohio Toy Show, uh, you you were very reluctant, a little laid back, playing, you know, <laughs> laying in the weeds, kind of testing things out while Alfie and I were willing to spend lots of money. But Alfie sent me a text away from all you guys. He was like, dude, I cannot freaking wait to get Mass back to that thing in the fall he was like it's, he's like it's going to change completely between now and october and i was like yeah i'm i'm waiting to see i was like it could change we don't know so go ahead yeah well yeah, isn't there got... okay go ahead, uh, 
I'm looking for the, uh, the my route my Mount Rushmore of uh, characters. I got because I was thinking about it, you know. And there's a, I was like, why do I keep watching this? You know, why do I keep going back to Star Wars? There's so many new things on TV. Why do I keep going back? And you know, and it's Ahsoka, you know, it's Luke, it's Darth Vader. And, you know, that's why I keep going back. So I thought, and, you know, Mando, Mando is what brought me back. So I thought I'm going to get those and I'm going to make myself a little Mount Rushmore. I like it. So, yeah. Go ahead, Brent. You were going to ask them. I apologize. Um, so there's something coming up. Another one that's like in July. Isn't there another toy show or something that you just sent out? There was a, I thought there was a toy expo or something. That yeah. you may have shared in on on the social media webs or somewhere, I thought yeah. that there was another one like in Ohio in like July, um, different wanna... from the one that you guys were talking. Oh, about. there it's um the the Kentuckiana Toy Show in Louisville, That's July thirty first. Yeah, we'll see where it goes. Yeah, we'll, we'll see how many we can get down there. A road trip or something. Um, so yeah, so you know we bounced around a little bit. One, I will say, I'll, I'll tidy up Nick's comments on on the wedding. It was really fun to get, you know, we're always on Zoom calls, and we're always so busy. To, so, so to get four of us together at one place um, and take a picture and talk a little bit. Of course, all of our wives are like, "Really? We're at a wedding? You're gonna go <laughs> take a picture with the Star Wars guys? Really? That's." And we were like, "Really? This is still a big deal for you? Get on board! <laughs> Come on!" <laughs> This is just, this is the way. Come on, that's right. Right, well, this is the way. Right, <laughs> but but it was good and it was fun and and we all we all got to do wedding stuff, but then also have some fun talking a little Star Wars. Um, but I think the big thing, obviously, you know, Brent and Alfie and I went over uh, episode one of the Bad Batch, which it was great. We this is the first time ever we did one of those live. You know, we we watched it and talked about it the whole way through, and it was a lot of fun. Um, but but you know since then we had uh episode two come out uh cut and run which alfie hit that one out of the park before before we finish our first show brent and he was like i gotta think that guy that is zerder and then i was like wait his name's cut well wait the the title's cut and run and i'm like oh man he just put that all together in like five minutes um so that was really cool but one for nick and ryan first initial thoughts on episode one of the bad batch and then all four of us can talk about where it went from there on, on the second episode. So Nick, I'll let you start uh, episode one. Any, any feedback or thoughts that we didn't get to talk about with you on the show? Yeah, you know, I just, I, it was my favorite Star Wars thing I've seen since, uh, man, in a while. It was like, I, you, you know this already, that time period is my favorite time period of maybe all Star Wars I just think it's so cool. It's so rich and, and very untapped. And I loved it so much that I got my dad who doesn't do the cartoons to watch it. And he watched it and he called me and he was like, I forgot that I was watching a cartoon about halfway through because it was so stinking good. I thought um, I, I enjoyed season seven of the Clone Wars. I thought the last four episodes in particular were amazing. I liked the Bad Batch episodes more than the ones with, you know, where Ahsoka and the, and the Martez sisters. And the Martez sisters. Those those were bottom of the list for me. I like those, the Bad Batch ones second. This to me though felt like such a they just did so much in so like such short time that by the end I, I woke up on Friday morning and I watched that at six in the morning, which my wife sat there and laughed at me the whole time that I watched it. But I sat there and I watched it and I was just like, okay, I want more of that right now. That's amazing. It's so good. I loved how they read, you know, you guys mentioned it, but like the Revenge of the Sith uh, parts that they made animated. And so for me, I, I told Abby, she was like, seriously, you're going to watch this at six in the morning. I was like, listen, this makes me feel like I'm like 12. Again, <laughs> going back to see Revenge of the Sith or going back to see what, whatever, whatever it may be, you know? So uh, overall, two thumbs way up. You can't see me if you're listening to the podcast, but I've got both thumbs up. He does. I Love can it. vouch for that. Um, Mass, any thoughts? Like you said, after watching episode one, you knew Hunter was going to be a guy you were going to be a fan of. What about that? I mean, we talked about it, the, the Kanan, Caleb Doom, Kanan Jarrus scene with Depa Balaba 
I mean, to start, that was fantastic for me that being a awesome. Keenan guy. But yeah. but what did you what did you think of the overall season season the opener? I th- I had the same feeling that uh, Nick did. Well, you know, when I when I first saw the the last four episodes of season seven, I told you that I enjoyed it more than like all the uh, the prequels or the sequels. I mm-hmm. I thought it was that good. It gave me goosebumps. <laughs> and the bad the bad batch started out the same way. I mean, it was it was just it was so good, and uh, the. Hunter is just an intuitive character. I mean, I, I realize that's one of his special gifts or whatever. I mean, his senses, but I just got this feeling that this is going to be one of my favorite characters before it's all over with. And I liked the story, you know, everything hit together so well. It was just, it was really just fun to watch. So, yeah. Okay. Go ahead, yeah. Nick, before we and hop I, over to Brent. And I would add to it too. I, I think one of my favorite parts about it was that it felt so connective to other parts of Star Wars. So like um, I was texting Sam Caldwell, who does the Clone Wars Chronicles with us almost in real time as we were watching it, you know, in the morning. Cause I knew you guys were watching it. I know he was up. He's a, uh, he's 5 a.m. Um, for him. He, yeah. He's central time. So, I mean, he was really getting after it, you know, so we were, we were going back and forth and he made the comment. Way to go, the, Sam. Man, mm-hmm. he's awesome. He, he made the comment though. Uh, like, uh, especially as we get into, you know, the second episode too, I feel like the sep- second episode kind of pushed it, but just the feeling of hopelessness that has now taken over now that the empire has come in, in and in how such a it, short time in such a short amount of time and how it feels like almost the beginning, uh, the beginning and really the multiple seasons of rebels, where when you watch that, it's just this oppressive force that you just can't get out from underneath. And how quick they were able to switch it. I, I made the comment to him when I was texting him. I said, so besides killing all the Jedi, does Order 66 just make you a total dill hole as a clone? <laughs> like literally, you just become like the biggest jerk in the galaxy if you're a clone. And uh, but it was it was very cool. And then sorry, now I'm just word vomiting because I'm excited about it. You got me excited about it. But like tying in the Saw Guerrera like cameo right which they didn't have to do they could have been any band of insurgents but tying that in for me made it feel very rogue one ish where it's just continuing to feed this character that you got like 10 minutes of maybe max in rogue one that now they're expanding out so i just i love how they're freaking dave filoni they're just connecting all of it and it's agreed agreed brent brent you and i went through episode one together after thinking back about it was there anything that we didn't really hit on and me, you, and Alfie covered for 70 minutes live and in Not, person. And really, it's going to be more of a question to see if we can spark some discussion is the is this idea of time. Um, because how much time does pass? Mm-hmm. How quickly does it happen? Um, like for both of the episodes, right? So when they go and visit um, Cut... One, he obviously is, they've obviously visited Cut before because the kids run up and call him Uncle Wrecker. Mm-hmm. And so that, I mean, that's interesting. But the other statement he said it was Rex was just here. So mm. how, how much time does it take? How quickly is, is it realistic? Because it, it feels like it's days. But is it really days? Or could it have been months? Could it have been weeks, right? And this is because of the dark side of you guys telling me about reading the books. Um, in the books, they always talk about hyperspace travel taking time, right? So I'm going down the dark side with the books. So the hyperspace travel takes time, where in the movies, it does, there's no real idea of how quick hyperspace travel takes. Right. So when they're traveling back to Camino from Saul Guerrero or traveling to Saul Guerrero, all of that travel. Yep. How much time really is passing? You know, this is a, this is a good question because it's a question as old as star Wars. And the question was how long were Luke, Ben, Han and Chewie in the Falcon on their way to Alderaan slash Death Star? How long was Luke training on Dagobah with Yoda? So how long was the Falcon out getting chased by Imperials and Empire, right? Um, 
how long was it really between Empire and Jedi when they knew that Fett was going to be taking Han Solo to Jabba the Hutt? They know where Jabba the Hutt is. So how long did this take to get all that rolling? You're you're exactly right. And and I'm not sure. I know I'm not the person to answer that question. And I also know that I kind of I'm one of those people, maybe it's a Gemini in me. I just let myself go to that five-year-old place and say, I'm just going to take it in and let somebody smarter than me think about that. I'll just take it in and enjoy it. But I know you, Mr. Scientist and science teacher, you're sitting there going, if we take this and we do the quadrangle of that. <laughs> no, no, that's, not. no, 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 that's Nick. That's yes, Nick. it is. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, good. You're coming to the dark side of my space physics questions. Mr. I want my Star Wars to be Star Wars and not be science and cross mm -hmm. Keep well, the science out of it. Come on, man. It's awesome. just all the it's just all the discussion that you see on social media, on message boards, on other podcasts that you listen to, and they're talking about the time. Mm -hmm. And there's re it's really okay. So I got you. The uh, Order sixty six does turn you into a dill hole, right? Yep. But then there's also like Tarkin. <laughs> Tarkin is like already like this he master from manipulator Tarkin to right. Admiral Tarkin, and yeah, he had a different we don't uniform. Not the different uniform right so that was an observation that i heard somewhere and it's like i yeah you're right but like we don't know how much time elapsed it's kind of the thing that i look at in movie making right because we think movies can last or like it just depends unless somebody references point a and point b you really don't know how long the story actually is written for Unless you're in The Last Jedi where they say we have six hours worth of fuel and in <laughs> Rise of Skywalker, we have 16 hours before the planets are going to get blown up, which mm -hmm. why throw that in there? Don't know. Nobody needs to know that. But I'm going to go back to they throw it into the books all the time. They talk about the number of rotations. They talk about like it, it is in the literature. It is in the books. And they talk about it all the time because it's a mechanism. It's one. I don't know if it's words to fill pages, but it's also right. to try to give you some way to reference your real world into their world too gotcha nick go ahead so upon my second viewing of this first episode my heart did get a little happy when they get they're flying back to camino and wrecker goes man it's so good to be home how long has it been since we since we've been home and tech goes well it's been this amount of days in a standard cycle but it's really been this amount of days since we've been there and the interstellar, interstellar excited part of me was like time slippage. That's what they're talking about. And I got, I got pumped. And so back to you, how long was Luke on Dagobah? Who knows? How close is Dagobah to the star <laughs> that it's, that it's rotating around? It was lit up when he flies yeah. to it. It's not just some uninhabitable planet, you know? So this is where this stuff will keep me up tonight. Now just going like, well, how he could have been there for a long time. And is he now younger? than well, the rest of the people that were on the Falcon oh because thank you, so, Christopher Nolan, for... But at the same time, the Bad Batch was gone for a while too because Wrecker has this tally marking system of the number of successful missions. And when he gets back, he's like, 11 successful missions. And he starts marking it up. So they've been gone. Like even then, they'd been touring for a while yeah. being sent left and right through hollow, I'm sure by through hollow projections saying to go do this and go do that. But they'd been gone for a like long enough to do eleven missions. Yep. Mass, are you like me? Do you just take it in and say screw it? Whatever they tell me, they tell me. Or do you yes. get that into it? No. <laughs> no. I I just watch it and I decide whether I like it or not. That's how I do it. Okay. <laughs> so the questions so, we have to ask. So we have the <laughs> odd couple two two different ways right here. Well, okay. Well, so I guess the other thing is like what it is what it, what it kind of is an irritant to me in some ways was when i hear people talk about it as if they 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 think it's like this when nah they could like like the switch took too long or the fact that tarkin has this uniform they could have been making the uniform for a while and this is just the first time he shows up like like order it like <sighs> i'm with i you. mean i got i got you i, I brent mm -hmm. i get it i i just choose not to choose not to focus I, I choose to be big picture instead of finite small things go mass well it's like what we were talking about before with cut where everybody's upset you know because uh, 
it contradicts what was written in the books, but you know, there's a lot of time for that to, to straighten itself out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not all happening at one time. <clears throat> it's there's plenty of time. Could a time slippage explain why Obi-Wan Kenobi looks so much older than oh, everybody man. else? Oh, I don't man. know. I'm just asking these things. Uh, time passes differently on Tatooine than it does, I don't know, on Coruscant, the bright center of the galaxy. And that, that, that's I'm bringing up some big stuff here. We need to get, we need to get uh, people at Lucasfilm and Disney to answer these questions for us. Dave would have an answer. He would know. Filoni would know. And Filoni would and he probably would. He probably would. Um, so so they do go to J19 and I Samulakaya, whatever the planet was right there, um, where Cut and his wife and their children are uh, still hiding out after we saw them in the deserter episode of season two, I believe, of Clone Wars. Thought that was really cool. And Brent, like you mentioned, oh, Rex was just here. Oh, you know, good to see you, Uncle Wrecker. I mean. How crazy is that that they wrap season two, one episode, all the way forward to first season of Bad Batch? Just absolutely crazy. It's very cool. Well, and what I'm curious too is, true or false, if you watch Clone Wars from start to finish, that's not actually when events are actually happening either, right? So, like, could this be the same thing where, like, we're going to see almost, like, one-off episodes that happen that don't necessarily take place i don't know brett you've you got no please god no like that like, <laughs> i think i thought I you knew Filoni, something i didn't okay. know no i well so you're saying that right but if you look at the timeline the people who've gone through and put them in timeline order starting in season three he went in timeline order starting in rebels rebels goes in timeline order if you want to talk about in Filoni, Filoni we trust I think that there was when he started becoming more of the showrunner and more of the producer, I think he was hearing feedback that that was messing with people a little bit too much, especially this guy right here who's talking right now, because that would blow my uh. now if they did it as like arcs like that. But no, I would be so angry if they like because right now it doesn't seem like it's coming as arcs. It looks like it's coming as a story, mm. um, but I could be wrong. Like I, I like there's. Who knows? Hell, there could be a World Between Worlds show up next episode. Wow. Or we could get a droids arc. Oh. I feel like we're due for one. Well, I mean, it, but you, you talk, you say that, however, right? But you guys blew my mind. I think Alfie and Joe blew my mind. That yeah. droids arc had Wolf in it. It was Gregor, I think. Or yeah. was it Gregor? Yeah, I think it was Gregor. I, I'll have to double check, but I, I'm it was one of the one of one of those two. And one of the two that was up. on the one of the two that was on the old Walker in the desert uh, in Rebels. Yep. So one of those guys was found in the desert because of that droids arc. It's true. Oh, see, you know, uh, me bar gas on whatever. Uh, nothing's a throwaway. You're exactly right, Nick. So uh, I I I will say this. I thought that um, I really liked the bond that's starting to be created between Hunter and Omega. Um, I like to see, I like to see these shows where it's just big, broad pictures, but it, it, it focuses on small things, emotions and, you know, bonds and family. And, um, how weird would it have been if Hunter would have, if, if Omega would have gone off with cut and his family, you know, everybody focus on Mandalorian having baby Yoda with him. I think, people are really wanting to focus on the bad batch having Omega with them. But I, I really thought it was really cool because she's been born and raised and knows nothing but Camino to see plants, trees, to touch the dirt. I mean, let's think about it. We don't think about those things in the star Wars universe, but she, to, to pick up dirt and to look at it and say, this is so cool. And they're looking around like, what we roll around in this all day. What, you know, what's such a big deal mm -hmm. about it? But for her, whatever age level she is, that is um, that's a big deal to her. So she didn't know how to play ball with kids because she's never interacted with kids like that before. So I, I thought those were some really cool small scenes. Um, I also just I'm going to throw different things for us to hit on, but chain codes, um, Republic currency is no good anymore. It's now imperial currency. Um, but to get that, you have to lock into this chain code. 
so the empire knows where you are at all times um you talk about some big brother stuff that was that was from the very beginning they're throwing that big brother stuff out there so i thought that was kind of interesting but i'll let you guys go with this i mean it, it was a good episode it wasn't like some mind shattering episode but they were sprinkling in little things that will feed into the future episodes. Mass, any any thoughts? Um, <clears throat> no, not really. <laughs> uh, I love no, it. I um, love it. I'm never yeah, calling well, on Mass anymore. Go ahead, Mass. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead, go ahead, Nick. I'll I'll gather my thoughts. Uh, I I would just say I have really high hopes for Omega, and I have high hopes because. I'm not sold on her yet. I was texting. I keep saying I was texting with Sam in the it, like as we're watching it, and I got done with this episode, and I'm just like, man, I am not sold on Omega. I don't know if it's the Kiwi accent. I don't know what it is. Like, there's, it's hard for me to take it seriously. And he pointed out to me. I got to give credit where credit's due. He goes, go back to the first time you watched the live or you watched the feature film Clone Wars movie with Ahsoka, right? And I despised ahsoka when i first watch it and now she's in my mount rushmore if not right outside of it right like when you look at characters could they over a ser- there you go could they over a series of shows build her story i think there's a there's something coming right that we're gonna unveil as to why she was created and what her purpose was and were they experimenting with i know you guys talked about some of it were is she force sensitive what does that look like but I have high hopes, even though I'm not sold yet. And I, I think she's kind of annoying. Man, man, that Kiwi accent is thick. It's thick. It is a thick Kiwi uh, New Zealand accent. Thick. It, it is kind of it is kind of hard to, to go through it and listen to it just because how thick it is. And I love me some accents. I'll sit and listen to accents all day, but you're right. Yeah. She she does have a thick one. At so least she's one... not calling Hunter like you know, uh, Sky Guy or, <laughs> oh, you know, I don't know. His, his, Echo I kind of like or... the snips. I kind of like the snips in Sky Guy. I kind of yeah. like that. But yeah. um, the symmetry, the one thing that I sent to uh, to Joe, this was after I went shopping and while I was waiting on for my transport, I was watching the episode. Um, this is basically Rebels 2.0. And I'm saying that because Kanan Jarrus, Ezra Bridger, is the exact same relationship between Hunter and Omega. A reluctant mentor. Huh. Yeah. Because Kanan tried his damnedest for the first three, two seasons, or not two seasons, for the first six or seven episodes to try to push Ezra away. And Ezra wanted to be, wanted to be led by Kanan, wanted to be taught by Kanan. Omega, or sorry, Hunter has been trying to, not necessarily trying, but there has been to try to push it away. So that mentor, the reluctant mentor piece where Hunter really doesn't think he's equipped, but just like Kanan didn't think he was equipped. And for that matter, I think Mando didn't think he was equipped with Grogu. So there's been like that symmetry of that reluctant, that storytelling is that trope that it just is getting replayed again. Hmm. So I'm hoping that they go a different direction with the trope and not just basically retell the rebel story to a different audience or a newer audience. Um, the other thing is, and I'm going to die. My phone is going to die. So I'm at like 5% and I use my phone for this. So if I dip out, I'm going to dip out. So I'm just letting you know. I want, um, so that Kanan Jarrus and uh, Hunter and Omega. And I think it's also cool. I'm rambling vomit. We're vomiting that Omega basically mimics Hunter. There's been two or there were two or three times, like when they were kind of like sneaking around in Camino Hunter put his hand up to stop and you Omega put her hand up to stop. And there are like, if you go back and rewatch, I think I don't know if this episode is the first episode or the second. So she kind of is mimicking Hunter in a way um, just because he, she, she wants to be led by him. Um, where was I going? There was another piece that I was going to say before my phone dies. Um, oh, I don't know if there's going to be a force sensitive individual in this. Because I'm still holding out, I'm still holding out that Omega is not force sensitive. And at this point, and at this point, we're two episodes in, right? The only other Mm -hmm. series that I know of that doesn't really have a force sensitive person, and it's I'm about all through the first season of it, 
is the resistance show everyone else that you watch everything else star wars related has somebody who's strong with the force and force related and i think that like the resistance while it's set in a world that the fans haven't liked the animation of style of it was different there's also the missing force piece which doesn't make you feel like you're connected to the star wars universe the connection on this one is their clones right so everyone's going to feel connected because it's in the clones world and it feels like star wars because it feels like the clone wars that they grew up with but are they going to introduce a force sensitive individual well, i don't think omega i i i, I don't, I don't think omega is there was though in the first episode with Kanan Jarrus. You know, like oh, I got you. Okay, it's Definitely true. Like, like there so isn't. You're right, you're right, you're right. But yeah, going right, so that right. was like what the going first forward. three minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like the first three minutes because they wanted to yeah. show Order sixty six and the aftermath of that. So right. you're right. I mean, but I'm saying like I'm guessing like Not currently the there's no role. major right. there's no major character right. that is a force sensitive right, right, right. individual. Man, I nope. hope they do though, because like you think about this time period and there's still jedi on the run i mean like i saw somebody put on one of the 16 year olds that lives in britain that i follow on instagram put on their instagram like here are the jedi we know that survived order 66 in canon right not just not just in legends and it, it's a pretty small list even kind of looking through and i just think you could introduce so many cool jedi that escaped that they like casually run into, or there's something that, I don't know. I just think it would be cool to, I get it. Like that would then throw some stuff when like, when Yoda later in Return of the Jedi goes, there's only, or in uh, excuse me, in uh, Empire. Empire, where he's like, that boy's our last hope. Like he's the last of the Jedi, you know, kind of thing like that. But they could be killed by then. You know, I don't know. I hope they do something though. And they add in another cool Jedi that's on the run. I think that could be sweet. Mass, we, we took up a lot of time while you were putting your notes together. <laughs> any, any updates on that, or did you find any of that that was uh, what, in your head as well? What do we think uh, about Omega? I mean, <clears throat> she is she a, she is a clone, right? She was made in Camino. Is this what we believe? Yeah, I, I think what I'm seeing is she really has a good sense of reading people grab not not so much being force sensitive to where you know somebody can go you know like kylo was going into poe or ray's head but she can almost feel their feelings right she can almost sense so it, it's almost like hunter senses when people are near or when there's a trap coming or you know which way they should go she has a lot of that same thing but it's more of a a thought and a feeling kind of sense. That's what I've been. She said it to Crosshair. Hey, uh, where I, you know, I know you have to do this. You know, we're not mad at you. Whatever she said when she knew he was going to turn on him, right? I mean, mm -hmm. so I mean, I feel like that's kind of where her stuff is. But then again, she picked up a blaster and took down a sharpshooter. And when they asked, she said, "I've never shot a blaster before." So right. there are things. Maybe she has a little bit of Crosshair, a little bit of Hunter a little bit of wrecker and a little bit of tech all in her at one time. Huh. So go Brent. I think from, it's from episode the, this most recent episode cut and run. And I think cuts the one who said it. And he said that she's in a clone and that he uh, cut asked, well, why did they create her? And he said, I don't know. And he said, no, 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 no. The Caminos don't create without a purpose. Wow. Right. And, and why did they let her go? Good question. Right. I think right. she would have been yeah. destroyed if she would have been kept there. I think they knew what was coming with the Empire and with Tarkin wanting to clean house. Yeah, I think they wanted her out, especially protected by the Bad Batch. That was one of yeah. the places they thought she might be safe to where maybe they can reconnect and... and or does she have out. a purpose? That's a really good point. I didn't think about that until... like I watched it back a second time and I thought, um, what's the that part in Billy Madison where uh, the guy shows up at the very end and shoots it in. He's like, <laughs> man, I'm, I'm glad. glad. <laughs> I'm glad I made up with that guy. I had the uh -oh. same thought of when the Kaminoan opens the door or stops the door from shutting. Uh, mm -hmm. Wow, I'm glad we know that guy. Like, otherwise, the series ends because we got him stuck in the hangar, you know, kind of thing. So what's the purpose of them releasing her 
right. letting them get away other than just we're pissed at the empire is, you know, canceling our contract. You're, you're right. They have a plan. Yeah. It, it was, this was like probably plan B or plan C, but it's part of the plan because the plan of keeping her there was not going to work. They did, yeah. they did not want her to stay there with the empire coming in. I, Alfie made a good point in our show. He said, I feel like the empire is going to come in and just like they blew Geonosis to smithereens and killed all those people. He said, and Brent, remember he was like, I think the empire is going to slowly but surely here soon wipe out Camino so yeah. that there's not another clone army built that will compete with the empire. And you see think, it land that yeah. way. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know what her purpose is. I think we're all, I think we'll all be surprised. I mean, I really don't, you know what we've heard. She's directly from Django. We've heard she's from the emperor. We've heard that she turns into phasma or she's related. We've heard that she's, you know, related to Ray and Ray's father. I mean, we, we don't know. I mean, we, we honestly don't know. I, I think uh, I'm open to see where these 16 episodes take us and hopefully we'll get that, that story like Nick mentioned where it went from Snips and Sky, Sky Guy to Omega and Hunter at the end, figuring out a purpose and going from there. So Brent, are you about ready to, to die off on this? Anything you oh, want to hit so- us before you go? The only thing I'm going to leave you with is another question is where do we go for episode three, four or five? So I, to kind of get the discussion rolling. So where we're here, we've gotten here. We've seen the cut and run. We saw the chain codes. We see them get a, we see them work together uh, with each other, using each other's talents. Um, they get away, they get cut away. Uh, um, so where are we going? Where do we think we're going? Right. Uh, we could all be wrong. And that's the whole point is the speculation and think about where be. So I'm going to pick up at, uh, the podcast because yeah, I'm going to drop out here. So, so I'm going to go ahead and just take off, <laughs> but, um, I'd like to see you guys and hear what you guys have to say is where do you think we're going to go from here? Like, so what, what are our next steps? So thanks yeah. for letting me dip in. And I apologize that I didn't have my phone charged up and all that stuff. And, I'm the guy with technical difficulties today. You I think it, it goes around the circle. <laughs> Be good, brother. See ya. See you, um, so guys, I am um, one. I think we see from the <clears throat> preview, they're going to meet up with Rex sometime soon. I would assume. Um, the next episode is, I think, I think Alfie said it was called the replacements. I don't know if it's already up on Disney or not, or if he just saw a sneak of it somewhere. For the next episode, find this stuff. Alfie's looking in Australia. Yeah, he, he is. <laughs> he, yeah. Um, but, Where's the joy? Where's the mystery in that of just being surprised and waking <laughs> up on Friday morning and not checking Twitter and going, "Man, look, beautiful." I get it. It's his thing. I, guys, I don't know. I mean, I think, I think, you know, <clears throat> one thing that stood out to me in the preview when it first started showing was. There were like eight times they showed their ship going towards a planet. You know, it kept boom, another planet, boom. And and I feel like it's that A team thing that we talked about to where they come in just like it, just like on this episode with Cut. They helped save his family, boom, they're gone, right? They're off to another mission. I I think that's going to continuously happen. And you're going to continue to grow that bond between them. You're going to continue to grow that, that growth with Omega in the series. But as far as where it's going, where it's going to end up, I mean, we know where we get to with the next thing of Solo and Rebels. Those are the next two things on the agenda, right? Um, yeah, Solo, Rebels, and Rogue One. So that's yeah. the next things in front of us. So we know where we end up there. No mention of Bad Batch in any of those. No mention of an Omega in any of those, right? Um, so I don't know if there's going to be things that time together or if it's going to be parallel things going along alongside of each other i i don't know do you guys have any good thoughts on this at all no not really i hope it's not as much as the a team you know we go from planet to planet each one and the only reason i say that is i i talked with another guy this week about it and i felt like episode one it was longer and they tied it into order 66 and so in my mind it was like quintessential perfect way to kick it off I couldn't think of one way it could be better. This episode fell a little flat to me. And I'm hesitant to say that 
but it, I think just on the heels of how good episode one was, I don't feel like we actually, now you could argue like, I don't feel like it actually helped move the story along that much. Like, again, I know we went and we helped, you know, get some more story with Omega. I know that there was some more connection that she really wants to be with him, but I kind of feel like we already knew some of that from the, um, from the first couple episodes where she's like, I want to go with you, you know, kind of thing. So I'm hoping that there's more like that, that not that we get more, but just like that it's more than just like, <laughs> Hey, we're trying to do our thing in the, and now we're on an, now we're on another quest. Right. And now we're kind of like the Mandalorian felt that way to a degree where it was like, golly, like, can we get back to the main story? I don't <laughs> care about the other things. Just show me the real story. To, and it's not that I don't care, but show me the real story at some point. That's what I want to see. Do you, do you think either one of you that the Bad Batch is just a vehicle to show you what's going on in the Star Wars universe mm. and make connective tissues, but telling things in a smaller scale with this one little group so you can see the change, you can see the oppressiveness, you can see the beginning of a rebellion, Saul Guerrera, um, all those things that are around them. But overall, their storyline is about this big while everything that's going on around them is a much bigger scope and scale. Do you feel like that? I mean, because until they go deeper into it, you're right. It could be a Mando, a ba an A-team or whatever if we just leave it doing this. Mass, any thoughts? I think that's exactly what they're doing. But I do believe this is going to get broader because um, the where I disagree with you, Nick, is when Crosshair left the team, I think that did open up, that did move the story along and it gave it some directions it could go. I mean, yeah, he is, he's going to hunt them down or he's going to continue to hunt them down. And right. so they, they, and he's got all the, you know, the, the empire behind him now. So they basically do have to run for a while and it's going to be the beginning, you know, they are going to hook up with the people that we've seen so far Saw Guerrera, you know, this is going to be the beginning of the formation of, I mean, Princess Leia is mm -hmm. in it now. So this is where the rebellion starts, I think. Well, so and, and so, Mass, you, you hit on something. When you said it, it just stuck in my mind. Nick's already mentioned there are missing or surviving Jedi. Plenty of storylines to go along there. We have Saw Guerrera. Plenty of storylines to go along there. We have Cad Bane and Boba Fett who would have That's had true. an episode or an arc in Clone Wars that never got made that could become part of this where you see Boba Fett take out Cad Bane and become the BA bounty yep. hunter that he is. You see Fennec Shan. Who hangs with Fennec Shan in, in the book of Boba Fett and in The Mandalorian? Boba Fett. So mm -hmm. you have all those. We already know we've got Andor coming up. Who's some people who are going to be in that? Mon Mothma and Bail Organa. Well, yep. perfect timing, Nick, in that sweet spot you're talking about. They're still senators right now. Totally. Right? Right. So you, you could wrap all these in together in yep. different layers. So over 16 episodes, I mean, that's a, that's a lot of stuff to take in. That's a lot. And let me ask you, do we know if, I was thinking about this too, speaking of that time period, do we know if Lando that they're coming out with, if that's a pre or post this era as well too. The only reason I would be curious too is like, if you're gonna run into somebody, I could totally see them, you know, bringing him back from Rebels and playing yep. some sort of, you know, underworld that helps smuggle him out somewhere, you know, in, in some capacity. And then my mind was going to, where do you see these guys actually play out in live action? And so do you see him the question I was asking myself in this next, mm. this last one was like, it's when the one clone turns and he, he goes, wait a minute, you kind of look like, and yep. then he gets distracted and walks away. It got my mind just going on the rabbit trail of like, how trippy would it be to see like six Timora Morrison's all <laughs> kind of, you know, different. And I don't know if they would ever do that, but Mike, I would just be curious, like, is there any crossover we get? Cause you're right. There's a bunch of stuff coming up that's in this time period. It's so like, Obi-Wan Kenobi is going to be in there and mm -hmm. or you're going to get uh, all, all kinds of stuff. Well, and, and even speaking on that, you have a chance now to wrap in 
the beginning of the Inquisitors before they ever get to Rebels. That's it. Right? We've got yep. the missing Jedi. Inquisitors could be out looking for them. Um, and there are going to be supposedly the one lady who said she gets to fight with lightsabers in Kenobi. I'm hearing that she's more an Inquisitor instead of another Ahsoka Tano or something wow. like that. So from the time, because Kenobi happens 10 years after Revenge of the Sith. This is happening right after Revenge of the Sith. Right. Who's to say this can't go a handful of seasons and, and lead right up to Cassian and uh, Obi-Wan Kenobi's story? So right. you could wrap all that in. And instead of making all these live action shows, this show can be, hey, here's how we're going to keep you intertwined and connected until we get those live action shows off and going. Absolutely. Well, and I think, too, there's there was a comic book that came out at the Legends Now but it was essentially, if I remember correctly, Vader just hunting down Jedi. Mm -hmm. So there was like this gray woman Jedi that like lived in the middle of this forest that he goes and he takes out, but then she like haunts him on the backside, right? So like there's all these Jedi that aren't even assigned to clone troopers that just exist that, you know, that there was the one I talked about a couple episodes ago of it's an actual Clone Wars comic that was made that's mm -hmm. now considered legends where Obi-Wan Kenobi teams up with all these kind of renegade rogue Jedi and they all die. And he's like the only one that escapes, but like how many more of those Jedi are out somewhere that didn't have a, you know, a battalion of clones with them that are now just surviving that they could casually stumble upon uh, yeah. like on the planet uh, that it looks like they're going to go to uh that was the head of the confederacy you know the mm -hmm. I, raxus was it raxus prime something i don't know now i can't remember where's alfie when you need him but that's you know he's sitting at home on painkillers painkillers right now oh, poor guy. <laughs> and that's not a bad thing folks if you're listening he's not <laughs> addicted to any kind of painkillers he hurt himself at work today he's not feeling well or he would be here and we told him get healthy get better we'll, we'll although it would have been funny as heck to have a <laughs> lit up alfie on Can you imagine video. the trippy theories we would get <laughs> be awesome he gives trippy theories when he's not on painkillers yeah, it's um, right. so so you know I, I went into this episode with you guys tonight thinking what are we going to talk about what's out there and and not reality i mean just the bad batch alone in two episodes in 90 minutes i mean there, there's been a ton that's gone on and that has made us spark and think about what can go on um so talking about that if we're this excited and there's this many things that that feed into that original trilogy post prequel trilogy time frame um i mean man it's got to have us chomping at the bits for the lando series the cassian series the obi-wan kenobi series i mean that's going to be some good stuff coming out if we're this pumped about the Bad Batch, which, as Brent said, you get some clones who don't have Force abilities, and we're this pumped about it. So right. um, I've got some other little goofy, silly things to talk about here. We can bounce it around. If there's other things on Bad Batch, we can hit that real quick still. If you, Mass or, or Nick, if you have thoughts, um, or we can we can finish up just kind of steamrolling through some things. Go ahead, Nick. Well, you know what this also got me thinking about? You said it how excited we are about this right now. I was just, we, we've talked about it at nauseum on this show before, but the idea of we want an animated series post return of the Jedi as well to almost like directly coming out of that or, or something, mm -hmm. you know, in regards to that. And it did get me going like, man, I feel like this has been that time in between uh, maybe, maybe this is a, a wrong assumption that time in between episode three and episode four if you are a book, comic, video game person, you love it, right? Mm -hmm. There's not a ton of visual. It's like, it's a solo, which not a ton of people loved. I loved it less about the story, less because of what your point earlier, it shows what's happening in the world mm -hmm. around during that time period. But now that you're seeing Bad Batch, you're seeing some more visual and you're seeing people get pulled into that. I would be curious even post- Return of the Jedi now, if we were to get a series like that, how much excitement that would bring and how much love that could garner for the sequels that have come before to help kind of make them feel a little bit more seamless. I, I agree. 
I agree with that when you said it. I I think um I think what I'm looking at now is is I'm not saying that Brent's wrong about the books and comics. He's not. He, well, I'm saying I'm not saying he's right that the the dark side or whatever. But I will say this: the more I'm watching the Disney stuff, and the more I'm seeing the way Lucasfilm's going with the animated, the Disney Plus live actions and movies, I'm going to tell you, I, I'm going to always read the books. I'm going to dabble in the comics, but I have a feeling that the books and the comics are something that they say, hey, we're going to take poetic license out of what's going on in those and what we really want to keep out of them, we're going to keep. But just like with the Caleb Doom Canaan thing, we're going to blur the line a little bit just because it's a book or comic. Because think about it. How many people saw even the movie that we didn't agree that was that great, that that was the best of the movies, Last Jedi. How many people saw it? And it made a billion dollars, right? Yep. How many people have read the Darth Vader comic books? Yeah, very few, very few. And in uh, fact, I think we get better endings sometimes. So like they messed with the Ahsoka book mm-hmm. um, yes. at the end of Clone Wars. And 100%. I think it's a much better ending than what we got in the book. And so my thing would be as long as it's better in what we see on film or what we see on the screen that it is in the book, I don't care. Yep. So I'm, I'm okay with them fudging with the comics in the books. I really yeah. am. And, and, you know, Adam Bray's always said there's going to be a multiverse of literature over here visual you know animated live series and and movies over here i'm okay with that yeah. I, i'll still read them i'll still get into them um but but uh so here's a couple quick hot points i want your guys opinion on it alfie sent us something today and i never really paid attention to this or the other day he said that in the special edition of empire strikes back they actually filmed redid some filming of Anakin being Darth or Hayden Christensen being Darth Vader kneeling down in front of when they redid the Emperor as the hologram from the old version to the new they had Hayden take a knee and be Darth Vader in front of that did you guys know that I never really paid attention to that that was filmed they didn't put it in anything but they did film it wow I didn't know that they so they put him in the actual suit just to have him kneel and they dubbed him over and everything like Mm -hmm. that Mm mm-hmm Seems yep. a tad unnecessary. Well, they were filming Revenge of the Sith, and they said, hey, by the way, guys, while you're here, we're oh, redoing some of these things. Can you, you know, before they released them on, it wasn't the special editions. It was when they released them on Blu-ray, DVD. Yeah, that's right. Okay. They, they grabbed them and had them ready to go. So that, Alfie brought it up. I thought that was really cool. I, di- I didn't really pay attention to that. Um, speaking of the time frame right after Return of the Jedi, um, if they ever did a live action series, uh, I saw somebody else pull this up. Um, if they did a live action of that time frame with maybe uh, Sebastian Stan playing a Luke oh. after Return of the Jedi and uh, Finn Wolfhard, or is that how you say his name? Wolfhard from Stranger Things playing a young Kylo yeah. Ren. I thought that my, I was, I, I, my mind just <laughs> blew. Because it just takes a little bit of makeup, a little bit of stuff done with the hair. You, you could pull that off. Yes. You could. Those guys were like built to play that. I 100% agree. I would love to see that. I would, that would be on my list to say, if I can't get an animated, give me those two doing that right there. I and think we get to see easy. some of the fall. Is that what you're saying? Like see how, how their relationship got fractured. Yes. Wow. That's coming some, some way, shape or form. That's going to happen. Sebastian so Stan's talking about it way too much, right? Yeah. I don't know. If <laughs> I like him animated or live action but it's coming somewhere i agree i agree wow man that would be really cool i've Um, i've I've seen things about a luke skywalker series but i I, yeah they're very vague exactly a couple different places yeah another thing that i wanted to end on because we're, we're a little late on this last week we did the show where it was just completely dedicated to um the bad batch aftermath first episode St- we just celebrated mother's day i know we were all we all have wives uh, we all have significant others who have kids all that kind of stuff um we all have moms um so it was, you know it's an important day and we you know we, we didn't say enough thank yous to uh the ladies who are part of what we do here rule the galaxy and and letting us go have our fun once or twice a week on this but if you had to look at star wars moms We'll finish up on this here. 
mm. Star Wars moms, who and where, who, who would you say is your top one or two Star Wars moms? In honor of Mother's Day, a little bit late. I apologize, ladies. This should have been done last week, but we did that streaming of, of the Bad Batch. Wow. This is a good question. We've got Shmi. We've got Padme. We've mm -hmm. got Leia. We've got Harrison Dula. Yep. And we've got... Um, Does Mara, Mara Jade count on this <laughs> list? In Mass's list, I'm sure she does. <laughs> Mara Jade? Yeah. Yeah. So Ben, ben Skywalker. Um, I, you know, I mean, it's, it's hard to think that you can't put Leia, Padme, and, and, uh, but then again, you, Padme saw her kids for all of moments, right? So yeah, she does not make my list. She's um, awesome on her own, but. <laughs> nope. uh, Princess Leia's the queen, Queen Organa. She passed away shortly after Leia was brought to her. So uh, unfortunately that's, that's a rough one. But then you look at, you know, Shmi Skywalker, her son became Darth Vader. It's kind of tough to put that up there, right? Um, you got not her fault. Not her fault. Um, <laughs> you've got you've got Princess Leia, General Leia. Her son becomes Kylo Ren. I mean, sure. It, 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 moms in Star Wars. There are some good ones. What about but, adoptive moms? So, like, like, not really like significant women so like aunt baru baru she's Takes got a rank up there yep. yeah got a rank up there yeah um i would say though princess Leia takes the top of mine and i know i'm gonna catch crap for that because you go well wait a minute she uh you know she her son becomes kylo ren and goes bad you know and does all this kind of stuff i only say this i'm rereading the aftermath trilogy right now yes there's the part in life that where she becomes conscious of Ben Solo within her. Like it's like his uh, force sensitivity like spikes up and she has this moment and she's raising, she's growing this kid while Han is out freeing the Wookiees. So really she is, she's, you know, being the ultimate mom, taking care of her kid while her husband's off doing his smuggler Wookiee freedom thing. I'll I'll give I'll give it to Princess Leia as well because not only that, but also because she had Jason, Jaina, and Anakin Solo in the in, in the universe. expanded universe. Yeah, and if she you comes count that, through for them. Yeah, she's she's fantastic in those in those books. Mm -hmm. Yes, I love those books. That uh, they yeah. Yeah, they should have had more kids in these movies <laughs> like they did in the extended universe. And, you know, her and her, her and Han should have, uh, they should have been together. Yep. I get it why they, you know, why they were apart after Ben, but in the books, yeah. they were so great. They were but, such a great family. But to be fair, though, in the, in the Yuzong Vong uh ones they're they're kind of separated in those ones too and so After back Chewie to why died. leia's yeah back to why leia's the best han is holding his youngest son accountable for chewbacca's death which like come on dad really mm. it's your kid and leia goes to bat for him and is like hey forgive your kid and get over yourself you're his dad like what do you do you know so strong mom leia I, I, agree. I agree i think i think we all agree then leia while we have the hiccups with kylo uh all around you know, top top mom in star wars princess leia leia organa leia solo um yeah so again sorry to all the moms out there who were a little late on this we should have done this last week but happy mother's day um belated happy mother's day from the rule of the galaxy crew guys um great show great topics great to go over that stuff i have a feeling with bad batch we're gonna have plenty to talk about for the next however many weeks we got to plan out some more toy show visits. Um, we are going to have <clears throat> a uh, Rule of the Galaxy get together at the house in the pool very soon. Maybe make Brent bring the the uh, Star Wars Legions over and uh, bounce. You know, we can rotate who's out of the pool and who's playing <laughs> games and stuff like that. And you know what? We'll put uh, 
Star Wars on Disney Plus all day while we're while we're doing our thing. So, um, any closing thoughts? Any closing points from either one of you guys before we break away? I'm only coming if he promises to do the splits. Count on that. <laughs> Yeah, That's I want it. that on the YouTube video. <laughs> Count on it. That will be filmed. Um, Mass, Nick, Brent, thank you guys so much. Another another chapter of Rule of the Galaxy is in the books. I think it's like chapter 80. I'm sorry. I don't keep Let's track go. until I post it. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you for all the listeners. And thank you for Tom Line. To, I know it's not Star Wars related, but bringing me over this My Captain God. America wall hanging because he just saw it on clearance somewhere. Tommy, always appreciate you listening and, and being a part of what we do. And you know what? I'm not going to lie. I'll take free gifts. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, but um, thank you guys so much. Oh, if you haven't checked out before we leave, if you haven't checked out Chewy's Cantina on Facebook, you need to go check out Chewy's Cantina because they sell Star Wars, uh, Marvel, DC, pretty much everything like that. Uh, Steve Glosson and uh, Lucas... I'm going to say wrong. Lucas Roberts, run it. So Steve Glosson from Geek Out Loud, run it. But go check it out on, on uh, Facebook because it is a great place to get cheap Star Wars toys. Nobody gouges you for anything there. So go check that out. Um, you can always follow us again, Rule the Galaxy SW on Twitter. Email us, rule the galaxy SW at gmail.com. Follow us on YouTube and on Facebook at Rule the Galaxy. Subscribe, hit the likes. Make comments. If you make comments on, um, if you subscribe or make comments on uh, the podcast or um, YouTube, we will give you shout outs. Maybe there'll be some free gifts coming out soon again, like we did recently. So do that. Let us know you're out there and let you know, let us know what you think. Thanks again. And until next week, may the force be with you. <laughs>